This is the most profound question. You've tricked me. Hi, I'm M. Sorcier, creator of The Misadventures of Buddy and Friends. You can find me at Matter Sorcier on Twitter and Instagram. That's M-A-T-T-A-S-O-R-C-I-E-R at Twitter and Instagram. And you're watching and listening to Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We are joined today by another talented individual. She is a very talented comic creator. We were supposed to talk about one of her initial comics, but I'm sure she'll be back on talking about it. But we're talking about a brand new comic from her as well, too, called The Misadventures of Buddy and Friend. We're joined today by the ever-talented M. Sorcier. How are you doing today? I am alive and not on fire, so I'll call that a win. I've never had that answer in 15 years. That's good. Oh, uh, cool. I'm, I'm glad to be a pioneer. For those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talk. Uh, I am M. Sorcier. I am a self-taught artist and writer from Bronx, New York. I am currently launching a campaign for my new comic. Well, it's it's a new old comic because it's a web comic that I brought back from the dead as a print comic called The Misadventures of Buddy and Friends. I do the writing and I do the art and it is a fun time. So then tell us what The Misadventures of Buddy and Fred is all about because I, I love the art from what I got to see and I'm loving the fact that this campaign is, is doing well. So, so tell oh, us what the comic's all about. Uh, the comic is about a bumbling bounty hunter by the name of Buddy who is trying to save the world from a demon invasion, but first he has to serve community service because, <laughs> <laughs> because of a tavern brawl gone horribly wrong. Wow, I, I don't even know where to say. I thought the demon invasion was bad, but community service seems to be worse. Oh, it is far worse. Oh, and there's also giant spiders. <laughs> like, giant spiders. <laughs> Do they run the tavern, or is that the community service? No, it's it's completely separate, but <laughs> equally horrible. It's a lighthearted story with a lot of dark humor. So it's like very Monty Python, like Mel Brooks-esque, where it's, it's parodying a certain genre, but also like showing a lot of love to it. What would that genre be then? Fantasy. I love, like, I love the fantasy genre, but I also love making fun of the fantasy genre because sometimes it just begs to be made fun of. What's the most misunderstood aspect about the fantasy genre that you're trying to turn on its head? I think just the tropes in general, where it's just like, all right, well, we've got this stereotypical intro where there's like, oh, there's a tavern brawl going on, but instead of the hero, like, being the big hero and saving the day, it's like, nope, he goes to jail. So it's just already turning everything on its head. It sounds like it'd be a good D&D &D campaign. You know, it's funny because back in the webcomic days, somebody had commented and said they were like, it's like a D&D &D campaign where everybody rolls a one. And I was like, <laughs> that checks. That sounds like a great tagline. <laughs> hmm, I should use that. I will incorporate that somewhere. Looking at creative endeavor that you've taken in terms of this particular comic, you know, what was the reaction to the webcomic and what are you hoping to ob uh, obtain in this print version for those that maybe haven't read the webcomic? The webcomic had a small like niche following because it's kind of hard to take off as a webcomic. There's so many of them out there now. But I mean, what I'm doing with the print comic is I'm basically remastering it. And I don't mean just like, all right, well, I'm tweaking the art. Like I'm rewriting a lot of things that needed to be fixed and like redoing the art. And the reason I'm doing that is because like this webcomic was back in like 2013. So mm. it's like 10 years ago. I've learned a lot since then. And I would like to have that reflected in the work that I'm doing now. So what have you learned then as, as a creative person in this decade since it has begun? Oh my God, a whole decade. I feel so old. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned better writing. Since it's a comedy, I've learned how to land like better punchlines, better like visual comedy, just better framing in panels and stuff. I didn't know a lot when I started out since I'm entirely self-taught. I had to just keep experimenting until I figured out what works. So now that I know what works, I'm revisiting it and it's a lot slicker looking. It's a lot funnier than it used to be. And it was like really funny back then too. <laughs> you mentioned Monty Python and Mel Brooks, which are right in my wheelhouse. So I, yes. you know, this is like, this is the best, best comic ever that I could think of. And it's funny because I started doing the show back in 2008 and I was primarily interviewing just webcomic creators. So I'm surprised we never 
our past Yeah, where have you past. been all my life, dude? Well, I've literally been around for 15 years. Where have I been all your life? <laughs> and this is the start of a beautiful friendship. There you go. Uh, so. Yay. <laughs> Friends forever. You'll never be rid of me. That's a threat, not a promise. Cool. I'm, I'm down with it. Enjoy the ride, basically. Exactly. <laughs> Looking at the campaign itself and yourself as a creative person, what are you expecting besides getting it funded? What are you expecting from either reaching your goal or reaching stretch goals of the comic? Do you have anything planned? For stretch goals and stuff, I really just like to reward backers for helping me get the thing funded more than it was originally intended to be funded. I keep throwing in things. I'm always like, oh, hey, you know, do like an extra sticker or like extra digital content or like little bonus art book. I used to do a thing that was like, if it got funded within a certain amount of days, like I would do a digital art book that was like a sketch for every remaining day. So if there's like 11 days left, I do, you know, 11 sketches. Stuff like that is great because I just want to do something to like thank people for believing in the project so much. And like, even though it's funded, because, you know, there's a few different groups of people on Kickstarter. There's one type where it's like, oh, well, this isn't funded. I need to help this creator get this project funded. And then there are the other people who are like, oh, it's funded already. Well, it's happening. Like, let me jump on in now. I also, I have a lot of friends who love to wait until like the last hour to pledge to the campaign. They've done so without fail and they usually pledge really high, but it's always like, I hope they don't forget. I hope they didn't forget. Like they're <laughs> keeping me on my toes. So what's the hardest part about being a creative person? Is it the beginning, the middle or the end of your process? The blank page. The blank page is very scary, especially since I'm the artist and writer. Like, I can't do scripts very well, so I just plan everything on the fly, like, as I'm working on the actual comic page. Sometimes you sit there and you're like, I don't know what to do. Like, I kind of have the dialogue going and I have, like, an idea of what should be happening, but then it's like, well, how do I frame it? How many panels do I use? And it's intimidating. And, you know, even doing this for 10 years now, it's still scary as hell. And I don't think it'll ever not be scary. So if anybody out there is scared of making comics, just know that I'm scared of making comics too. You persevere. You keep at it. You, you wouldn't be still doing this for 10 years if you didn't at least enjoy the process. Or yeah, I love the process. I will say still like creating the comic itself is the easiest part, but then marketing it is the hardest part. Yeah, marketing's hard for everyone unless you just hit lightning in a bottle and you happen to take off for some reason. So. Oh, please, lightning, please, please strike. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. What was an early experience where you learned that language had power? That's a very profound question. <laughs> you know, I want to I want to be the person that says you know, swear words, I guess. Like they have a lot of power. <laughs> like you know when you're a kid it's like oh this is forbidden this is like I can't say it and then all of a sudden like when you do say it you're just like ah I said the thing that you told me not to say <laughs> and it feels very powerful. Shout out to 10-year-old me. <laughs> all right, then favorite swear word. Mm. There's so many, you know, all of them, all of them. <laughs> Equal opportunity swears, it's, it's very situational. What are three things that you've accomplished in your career that you're most proud of? And what are three things that you're looking forward to accomplishing in the future? Oh man, so three things that I'm the most proud of. First of all, just getting like any comic started at all. Like I'm super proud of that. It's a step that like, I know a lot of people still have yet to achieve. Also getting some of those comics in print. Like I've done five Sacrimony books so far and it's still unbelievable because like those books are like 30 pages each. So basically since 2020, I've published like a good 150 something pages of comic. Third thing would be that I'm really proud that people talk about it, I guess, because it's like, all right, well, you know, you can have something out there, but if nobody talks about it, does it really make a sound? Or if it does get any likes on social media, does it really? Uh, yeah, that social media. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's hit or miss. I, it really I, is. Like Instagram is dead to me. You know, my quality of life is so much better now that I just open up Twitter like once, maybe every other day. I'm just so much happier. I just, I don't need that mess in my life. Three things that I'm looking forward to in the future. Mm -hmm. I mean, finally putting out like a solid graphic novel would be great. That's what this current campaign was supposed to be for, was uh, the graphic novel version of the collected 
issues one through five of Sacrimony, but I'll get to that in a few months, so you'll see me again. You know what I'm looking forward to? Not being super duper stressed out by Kickstarter campaigns. I don't know if that's actually a thing where people get to the point where it's like, ah, oh, yeah, it's just another Kickstarter, or if it's just always like I'm tearing my hair out and like the last two days, just like, oh my God, what's going on? Or even, you know, before the campaign begins, just like, oh my God, what's going on? It would be nice to like be able to chill out or at least be like, all right, I got this. Like right now, this is my seventh campaign so far, and I'm still like, this is really scary. Does it ever not be scary? I don't think so. I mean, I you're putting yourself out there. You're putting a product out there. You're trying to get the masses to actually fund it, first off. And, and secondly, get the repeat consumers back to help support you as they have in the past. And if you keep making a quality product, going to eventually stick. But you're right. It's, it's a gamble. 30 days is a long time. Yeah. Enter. Or if you're impatient like me, 22 days. I don't know, I feel like the full 30 days, there's at least like two weeks where nothing happens. Like yeah. most of the excitement usually happens in the first and the last week. So I try to cut out as much days of misery as possible where it's just like sitting there like, oh my God, I lost a backer or like no one's backing right now. You know, like I could do without that. I usually go for anywhere between like 21 to 25 days or whatever, depending on how I feel like. I never go for the full 30, it's just, it's too much. That's probably for the best too. It's uh, It gives it a shorter window for them to support and it also keeps you fresh after three weeks of pushing. Oh my God, yeah, jumping around going, yippery, skippery, like buy my comic. <laughs> like, I, I'm not like that in real life. I can't keep up that energy. I'm very like introverted, so it's hard to maintain that level of enthusiasm for you know longer than three weeks. I mean, even three weeks, it's hard. Usually there's a point in the middle where I'm just like, no, I'm not doing any social media posts for a few days. This is pointless. No one's backing anyway, whatever. I'm going to chill out. And the last week I'll try to pick up again. You'll find a process that works for you. And it sounds like after seven campaigns. Seven, yeah. yeah. I can't even believe that. I'm like, no, this this is my, my third, right? No, it's my seven. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Everyone has one person that inspired them on their path to where they are today. Who was that for you? I'd have to say Neil Gaiman. I'm pretty sure he inspired a lot of people into comics. But for me, Sandman kind of changed my perspective on what comics could be. Originally, I was so used to just like, oh, like capes and tights stuff. And then I discover Sandman and I'm like, this is something completely different. And it's awesome. And it's like, you know, a soap opera with all of these gods being assholes to each other. And like, I can get behind that. From a professional standpoint, you have created seven campaigns. You have created multiple comics. And of course, you're going to have many more successes in the future with whatever you decide to create. So professionally, you're successful in that regard. Do you consider yourself personally successful? Oh, that is very open-ended. But you know what? I would say yes, because I am happy being myself and I wouldn't trade places with anybody else so like yeah i'd call that a personal victory that's a new one as well yes the reverse of success is failure how do you deal with your failures give myself a week to like cry scream like you know hide under the covers get it all out like get out all of those fields and then just pick myself up and figure out like what do i have to do now to make this thing succeed which is interesting that you bring that up because I had tried kickstarting Buddy and Friend back in 2018 or so. It was kind of a mess because I only had gotten like 22 backers by the end of it. It was barely funded. I felt really like sad and miserable about it. And now it's just things have exploded now. It's doing so much better, so many more backers, so much more funding. I always find a way to solve a problem, even if it's five years later. <laughs> I'll figure it out eventually. That's good. That was a good way to, to wrap it together. Uh, second last question. There is a fun one at the end, so so bear with me here. All right, all right, because my, my brain is hurting from all of the profoundness, uh, but it's okay. I'll what? soldier through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> last, last, last profound one. Okay. The younger generation is looking at your work and becoming inspired to be creative in their own way, whether it's as a comic creator, writer, or, or all together like you are currently. Maybe they'll find some inspiration in what you've created in some way, shape, or form. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? Ooh, that's a good one. I would say that the most inspiring thing you can do is to just be real, honestly. Like, don't pretend to be anybody that you're not. If you're the kind of person who has like screwed up, own it, be like, hey guys, I screwed up, but it's okay because I'm doing better now. Or even if you're like, hey, I'm doing this, but you know what, it's really scary. So if you're really scared, just remember you can do it too. Just being real, just talking about the realness of everything, I think it 
helps other people realize creative people aren't superhuman. We're not these like infallible beings who are like, all right, we we just produce this. Like we're not machines. We're just people and we're all scared shitless, but we're still doing what we got to do. If your life was a comic book, what would its title be? And what would its soundtrack be? Oh man, I have never thought about that before. You know, there are always times where I see like a funny word or something. I'm like, oh, that's going to be the title of my autobiography. Like I tripped and fell down the stairs and it's like somehow this is relevant to my life. (laughs) I haven't even thought about a soundtrack. This is the most profound question. You've tricked me. (laughs) I I didn't even think it would be that profound, but okay, I'll take it. Hmm. Maybe the song by Ailstorm that goes, we are here to drink your beer. That's a good soundtrack. I like beer. I'll go with that for now because I can't think of anything else. But uh, as far as a title goes, you know what? I'm alive and I'm not on fire. That's a good title. Well, Em, I do hate to say, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Before I let you go, where can we find you? How can we support you? And of course, where can we find the Kickstarter current campaign that's currently going on? The Kickstarter is at buddyandfriendcomic.com. It's all one word, buddyandfriendcomic.com. So you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, which are both kind of dead to me. But if you follow me, I'll follow you back. I'll say hi or whatever at uh, Matasorcier, which is M-A-T-T-A-S-O-R-C-I-E-R on Twitter and Instagram. And I think that's it. I don't really inhabit a lot of the internet spaces because I'm old and tired. Uh, msorcier.com, which is msorcier.com. It's my portfolio site and it also links to the Kickstarter and like online shop and stuff too. It's kind of like a little hub for all the things I do. Well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others quite literally on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word two, not the number two. But actually, our YouTube channel is a lot more updated than our website because I'm only one person. Give me a break, which is youtube.com forward slash C forward slash TGT media. And the podcast is back after 14 years, which is, of course, two geeks talking dot podbean dot com. And it's available on all your favorite streaming services. As I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on two geeks talking.